Well, and what the hell is in the drinking water in Sacramento where three of my favorite bands of yeah. all time come from there? Far, yep. Devtones, and Wilhaven. Yeah, I think, how, about, how I think about this a lot. I mean, and... And at the same time, too. Right. At this, and you guys sound all different. And keep yeah. in mind that also a, to, a, a totally different band called Cake was in Sacramento. Yes. 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 Oh, God, yeah. And, oh, yeah, and there were other bands that never got quite as big. But the point is, Sacto was an incredibly fertile, creative place at that time. And I think what was in the water was super low rent. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> um, which helps <laughs> not a lot of press scene big city bullshit so not a lot of competition and a fantastic all ages club that wasn't in downtown in the city and wasn't in the burbs it was right in between it was kind of open to everyone and it was well run by good people who cared about music and so I just think there was a lot of things that happened at the same time and also frankly we were in the post Nirvana age of rock where there was a ton of money around. The bubble hadn't burst yet. The internet hadn't come along yet. CDs were still selling. Oh yeah. You guys were so, in that. So the time, music industry yeah. was, was basically vastly overfunded and we were the beneficiaries of that when we got signed and why bands were getting signed and getting a shot. I mean, Deftones, Woolhaven, us, Cake, very different bands, all of us. And none of us right down the middle, easy artists in any way and it was just an exciting time i think in music that way there was a lot of um there was a lot of cross-pollination between scenes at that time which was perfect for me yeah that's that's a big yeah. deal right yeah because so sacto was really like that sacto was a real epitome of that it wasn't you didn't have to fucking hustle too hard um there wasn't a lot of pressure you didn't have to make it or not so we got a chance to kind of suck in silence you know and really grow as a band totally. and not be forced into the spotlight too mm. fast. So I think that's what was going on in Sacto. I and mean, I've, I've thought about that a ton because it really was a special time. And I think it was partly where rock and roll was at that time and the music industry was at that time and partly where Sacramento was. You'd have, because between Seattle and San Francisco, for instance, there's nothing in between there except Sacramento. Well, to me, Sacramento much. is well, the next Portland. Seattle. There's Seattle, Portland. Oh, Portland. And, yeah. and then, but then there's a 12 hour drive to essentially to Sacramento. Yeah, Northern you, California it, is way vast and yeah, you don't realize it until exactly, you go through it. Exactly. Exactly right. And so a lot of people don't realize this is that there was just nothing above or, or to the east of Sacramento either. Because after Sacto, there's Reno, sort of, you know, but um, no offense to the Reno hardcore scene. <laughs> but, uh, Nope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> except for seven seconds, because seven seconds rules, and, and that's real. Um, anyway, but after that, there's you know there's Salt Lake. You got to drive a bunch of hours to Salt Lake, then Denver. I mean, it's just a very vast oh, bunch of space around Sacto. So that also we had, I mean, shit. You know, Pearl Jam came through in there called Mookie Blaylock. You know, oh that's, yeah, that's how I fell in love with them. Was them coming before they even called? I one, love that name. And it was Mookie Blaylock <laughs> opening for Alice in Chains at the ca at the same club we the were Cal playing. Club. Yeah, I was, I was hoping you, know, you were going to name that club because that's a oh, big... Oh, no, yeah. there's no way I'm not. I mean, Jerry Perry, Linda Perry, that whole family, Eric Bianchi, uh, Dennis Yutt, like these people were, were my family, um, were, were just the, the mothers and fathers of this scene. Yeah, it's important to have somebody there to cultivate a scene also. They fed us. They paid us fairly. We would play these shows at the Cattle Club and and pack it out, 500 kids or whatever, and walk away with 2500 bucks. which, again, my rent was 140 bucks at that time. So $2,500 would just – that would fund us trying to go up to the Northwest and go out to Salt Lake – where we would not make any fucking money, but we had this money from Sacto. So we would, it was a really beautiful home base and I really can't say enough about it, but I mean, yeah, I mean, Tool opened for us, you know, at the Cattle really? Club. Oh, I didn't even know. Wow, yeah. Holy awesome. shit. Right before Opiate had come out, yeah, they're total fucking dick, so fuck you, Tool. Um, <laughs> but, I agree with you. <laughs> um, I agree with you. Um, God bless them, but whatever. Uh, but they they taught me how not to be as an artist, actually. Um, but it was, but that's the way it was, is that, um, there were just these amazing shows happening, but it was all in this tiny little room. It was, I mean, we could pack 500 people in there, but after Great White killed everyone in that weird fire, yeah. it, you know, the capacity went down to like 200 people because that's really how many people should have should been have in been, there. Yeah. But so point is tiny room and yeah, you got fucking Nirvana and Tad and Soundgarden and Rage and Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains and like sort of 
everyone was coming around. Man, that's a fucking that, that, great time. And, and they would all be, oh they you know, Smashing Pumpkins. Um, they, they, and, and it's also the transition of like those bands. To yeah, the so newer, we like, got to open for them. Guys. They, that's crazy. You know, I mean, sometimes they open for us, which was bizarre. But yeah, I mean, so us and Deftones would take turns headlining. So one of us would be second, one of us would be headlining. Um, but I'd be playing an acoustic show with Cake one night, then a show with Deftones, and then, you know, it was just, it was a really, really sweet time.